pleasure to be on Fuse Ecology. I think that it was probably around 2017. I just had this, I guess, like creative um, epiphany slash crisis. You know, sometimes like you crash into certain walls, external walls or obstacles, and then you, you have to figure out how am I going to rebuild myself or like how am I going to, you know, move through this. And I just felt like a really strong deep, almost primal need to write um, and to not only write um, new songs, and, but to record them and to, you know, take creative control of my career and like my, my creative spirit. And that meant also being a producer and it meant just envisioning the whole um performance experience of my music and part of it had to do with sort of people in my life who were you know infringing on my on who I am creatively I started um in this time like turning to books which has always been a huge inspiration for me and a source of wisdom and a source of like ancestral guidance uh, whether it's ancestors in my own family or creative ancestors. Uh, Zora Neale Hurston is a writer, one of, I think, the most important writers of the 20th century and just a remarkable creative person who was an anthropologist, filmmaker, uh, writer, actor, journalist, and um, just a, a pioneer in so many ways, a woman um, ahead of her time in so many ways. And um, I was reading a story that she wrote um, and it's, it's um, I think it was in uh, Go Tell My Horse. And um, she was talking about how her patron owned her work. And I just, it moved me very much that she worked this hard and that her patron had the artist, you know, the creative rights to her work. So I thought, what kind of work could I create that I would retain control over and be able to sort of tell that story that inspired me, but also tell my own story? And I started writing Zora's Moon, which is an excerpt of something that um, a story she told about her. Zora is who I'm talking about. The story that Zora Neale Hurston told about her childhood and believing that the moon followed her as a little girl. and. I used to think the same thing actually. And when I read her saying that, um, and then I, I was gonna say heard her cause I um, did some, I'm an archivist as well. So I'll go through audio files, not just old records, but old records, um, interviews and other um, recordings for my source material and my inspiration. And I heard um, Hurston telling this story on the radio in one of my findings from the Library of Congress. And I thought there's just time and space that separates us, but in so many ways, I see myself in her. And I think of the linkages across time and space. Um, I'm very interested and always moved by um, perspectives in black futurity. And I think about the linkage the other way, um, you know, there's me looking to Hurston and then there's a younger woman, a younger child looking to me. And so I thought it's very important for me to echo this envisioning of um, power and greatness and magnitude inside of a small person, a child, or maybe an adult who doesn't feel like she has a voice, um, that she still has this sense of magnitude feeling like the moon is following her. And that became a really important part of that moment for me. It became um, a passage and then it, it kind of grew into an album. And now this um, collaboration that you hear, the remix with Natasha, uh, I consider her, um, I guess, a kind of muse and I think, and certainly my friend and certainly um, just like a bright light in this world. And so it does not surprise me, but it delights me to be working with her in 2021.
it's kind of like um, a starburst, like a spiritual starburst. I what I mean to say is, I know that I have musical gifts, and I'm really attuned to them. And when I started at music school, I felt, and I was just talking with a colleague um, yesterday, who's the head of the jazz department at um, at Peabody. And I was just saying that I, I find a sort of internal dialogue sometimes when I'm stepping into leadership roles in organizations. There's something about the structure of the performing arts that I've been a part of for like, I don't know, over 10 years, and yet I still somehow feel like an outsider. Um, and I think part of that has to do with needing to like break those glass ceilings, um, no matter how prepared you are, how talented you are, how educated you are, like, you know, as a woman, as a black woman, oftentimes feeling like an outsider, even when I very much belong to a conversation. So there's that. And I was going through that for a long time. And then when you hear this remix, what you see is like the Starburst. So I, it, I, I feel like I was holding all this stuff in for so long and like sort of navigating through the business. And I came to a point, as I was saying a couple years ago, when I was like, I just, I put, I set myself aside from the paces of the business. And I was like, just say what you really want to say and say it for all time and let it be a song and let it be an escape if you need it. Because some days are hard as a musician and New York can be a lot and I'm sensitive. <laughs> And let it be an escape if it needs to be. It's okay. And let it be a shelter. Let it be a, a bridge through whatever you're going through. Like, I remembered that music is not all these fancy things all the time. Um, not like um, always about status and attainment. It's like literally how I breathe and dream and eat. It's my appetite. It's my... It's connected to me, like, primally. And and then that's like a history, too. You know, there's the... I come from, like you said, I, my, my parentage is Jamaican. And I come from a place where, um, you know, music and dance are part of every kind of, like, life passage and moment in life. And I just connected to that. And with House, I totally agree with you. Um, I think if you're American and you understand what house, how house music emerged and like what it's trying to express, it's expressing power, self-expression, um, community, you know, people under a groove, into a groove, like that sense of funk. And it's also a place where, you know, a lot of the house tracks that, that really like burnt bright in my in my mind and my spirit are these strong female voices and often like if i think about the 90s music that i love and inspired me it's women in like suiting and just like really taking up space and so um you know I, that's part of my passion for natasha's um mixes and her parties and her sessions and like why i love to play them um the first session of soul in the horn that i played i was pregnant with my son who's two now like i was playing i met natasha at midnight with like my baby bump and i just rocked the party with her anyway and it was love and like that's what that's what that um you know that's what the culture is about it's about like come as the individual you are in the place in your life that you are and express yourself and feel good and like be in community some of the people i would love to work with um stevie wonder of course herbie hancock uh patrice russian would be amazing. Missy Elliott. Um, man, there's just so many. I'm, I have such a like curiosity and there's so much to learn. Um, one joy, recent joy of my life is I got to cover a Wayne Shorter song um, 
during the pandemic year with uh, Val Jean T and bassist Mimi Jones. We have another ensemble and um, Wayne actually listened to it and um, sent us a message back, which was like, I never thought, I never imagined, especially during the pandemic, you know, in 2020 that something like that could happen that Wayne Shorter would be listening to my interpretation of his song you know singing I said I recorded uh, Midnight in Carlotta's Hair and so I think that you know I tried to stay very open to that because you never know when that collaboration is around the corner um so many people I love Little Sims um I have like a lot of I think uh Tyler, the creator, um, Dev Hines, so many people I want to work with. Georgia Muldrow. Um, yeah. So it's kind of eclectic. I'm so excited for it um, because that was my, that is the like intention of my expression with the singles. I do like to I was really excited to share Zora's Moon first because there's so many people there are so many people who don't know who Zora Neale Hurston is and certainly how would they know how how you know how I work the digging that I do and why it's integral to what I'm writing you know for for the future I wanted to kind of just publicly explore my process and my journey through the song. So it was like a perfect first single. Um, and yes, I recorded a lot more um, in that vein of like personal revelation and personal discovery and also some like broad swaths of um, stories of legacy and history, um, some personal in my family, some, you know, from the diaspora. Um, some more commonly known. I, I also recorded a song called Waiting for the World, which is a setting of Langston Hughes's uh, poem, Tired. Uh, but it's a really sort of, um, uh, really sort of uh, fantastical and um, I guess, what would be the right word? Um, like Technicolor, version of the poem it has um some kind of like i even chopped and screwed my voice a little bit in certain parts just to really paint the poetry in a really um electric electronic way um so i i play with a lot of different textures but i've i've recorded a full length work and there's actually something that's directly um an EP that's coming out in the fall that's directly pulled from my life. It's a it's a, a musical visual presentation of my um, Jamaican heritage. <laughs> so how are you? How is how is that happening? Is that that is that a separate project? Yeah, I have a couple projects. So that's a separate project, and that will. Um, that will be just new music for everyone. And um, that will come out, I think, before the end of this year, likely. And then next year, a longer project will come out. Um, all part of this arc of the story of Zora's Moon and um, this like period in my creativity. I do feel like I'm just beginning. Um, it's an interesting thing, like linear, you know, the way time moves, if it's gonna be linear or not. Like, for example, I thought I did Winter Jazz Fest. Where, what else did I do? I did some wonderful things in 2020, all the way up to March. The Public Theater, I did Detroit Symphony, Winter Jazz Fest in New York, all these things I had not done before. And I'm thinking the line is gonna go straight and then you know, we all kind of go over the edge with the pandemic into this new, um, very unsure space. But inside me, I've continued to create and I've continued to keep and tap into that place 
such that now I'm super ready, super inspired, motivated, and like fired up inside to roll out this music that I wrote um, that I thought was going to come out, you know, sooner, but feels very timely now and feels just like what I need. Um, it's kind of like a um, creative bubble that I want to stay in as I go back into <laughs> this uncertain time. And um, it's also now like wrapped in so many layers of love and admiration for people. Um, I have a lot of admiration out of this pandemic for humanity. I am, I, I choose to look at, um, you know, what inspires and and what's strong in us and to see the sacrifices of our first responders, to see communities pull together, to see people helping each other, to see people thinking of each other and the sacrifices that have been made. It just makes me want to make music for those people even more. So everything that I wrote before the pandemic, I feel like is wrapped in this like additional layer of love and I just want to get out and play it. And um, so the timing feels right. And even though everything is uncertain, exactly how it's gonna fall in place, you know, time doesn't always move in a line. So that's like the lesson for us is we have to move horizontally sometimes and flow. And then when the, when the portal opens and you go through it and you can't really control it, um, you can just only keep alive what, what it is you have to say.